This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Give us an example, Friel. Give us an example. Happy to accommodate. This is Wretched Radio. Lofty preaching, exalting God. Is it scary? Yes. But there is comfort in knowing that our God is big. He is otherly. He is different than us. He's stronger. He's better. He's smarter. He's holier. He's everything here except evil. And proclaiming that God forcefully, loftily. Does it scare sinners? Yes, it should. But it can also be a comfort to Christians who are struggling. Uh, Steve Lawson, preaching. That's it, just preaching. This is what we're supposed to be preaching, not teaching. Preaching. It was A.W. Tozier who wrote years ago, the most important thing about you is what comes into your mind when you think of God. Tell me what you think of God, and I will tell you what is the direction and the trajectory of your life. A high view of God ultimately leads to high worship of God and high and holy living. And low views of God lead to trivial worship and lead to manipulative evangelism and lead to low base existence. And I might suggest low emotions too. There's a connection with the type of preaching that we consume and our feelings. We go, we go low when God is low. We're pulled up high when God is exalted and proclaimed highly. No church, no ministry, no believer, no seminary, no society, no nation can rise any higher than its worthy thoughts of God. Consider Downton Abbey. That's right. Consider Downton Abbey. The thinking in the Victorian era was that there would be a group of people, the rich folks, uh, the royalty, they would behave very high, very, very noble standards, all kinds of, of, of external manners, showing of graciousness. Most, most of it was a facade, but this is why these people, their job was basically to get dressed appropriately, to be served a meal, to be changed in the next batch of appropriate clothes, to get ready for the next meal, etc., etc., etc. The thinking was the higher the royalty is, the higher the, the, the hierarchy is, the higher society will be. Now, when those, when those people, when they dip down a little bit, then the bottom of society goes a little lower. When we lose more of that, the, the bottom of society goes lower and lower and lower and lower. Now, that's just manners. That's just clothing. What about God? When God is high, cult, all of us, forget culture, all of us go higher. All of us in every regard our holiness, our striving, our desire to be like him, our emotions become increasingly stabilized. The higher God is exalted, the higher we live, the higher we worship, the higher we parent, the higher we work, the higher we do everything. Bring God down, you bring down the church, you bring down us. Tragically, many people have crafted a puny God in their own minds. Some have a God who does not see or know the future. Some have a God who does not govern human history, but merely passively is an observer of the flow of the occurrences here. Some have a God who does not overcome man's resistance. A God who approves of every lifestyle. A God who is without a sovereign free will. Quite frankly, such a God is not to be praised, but to be pitied. It's a puny God. Have you been hearing about a lofty God or a puny God? In every generation when the church stands strong, 
It is in those hours in which the church has the highest view of God. And in those hours in which the church has languished in its impotence and has had so little effect upon the world around it is when the church has had the most base and low views of God. And if we are to have a reformation, if we are to have a revival in this hour and this day, it will be a reformation and a revival that begins in the knowledge of God. Hey, Jesus is cool, man. He's the answer, don't you know? And we have brought our majestic Savior down so low. He isn't worthy of revival. One Sunday morning, G. Campbell Morgan preached this extraordinary message on, on prayer. And a proper English woman came to him in the lobby Love after this. the service was over. She had on white gloves and took G. Campbell Morgan's hand with her white gloves and said, Mr. Morgan, can I pray about little things or do I only pray about big things to God? And G. Campbell M Morgan looked at her and said, Dear woman, everything in your life is little to God. <laughs> what they needed to see is that no prayer was too hard to answer, no circumstance too hard for God to overturn, no, no obstacle too hard to remove, no door too hard to open, no heart too hard for God to humble, no soul too hard for God to save. That is our God. That type of preaching, incidentally, it has another benefit. Better behave children. <laughs> so, if nothing else, mom and dad, when you're describing God to your children, <laughs> the loftier you present God, the better behaved they'll be because they don't want to get caught by that God. Are we preaching a high God or a all to... What was what, what was the name of that book again? Just ditches, ditches, ditches. Uh, 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 God in sandals. Wasn't that that was kind of the trend? Hey, what if, what if God were one of us, just a slob like one of us? Okay, that was a Cheryl Crow song, but we, we, we wanted Osborne. to make sure that everybody understood G Jesus is real. G who was it? Joan Osborne, Osborne, her only hit. Remade by Cheryl Crow. Look it up. The talk show host is never They sounded wrong. very similar. The it's fair for you to confuse them. <laughs> oh, I'm not confused. She did a remake. You just look that up. That's it's 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 buried in in Area 51. But, but trust me on on this one. When our kids don't fear God, they're, they're going to behave any way that they want to. When when the one that they fear you is not around, the more our kids fear God, uh, the better behaved they will be. That's a benefit, Mom and Dad. We've done a good job of making sure that people understand that God is a sympathetic, that Jesus is a sympathetic high priest. Done a, done a really good job at that. Maybe it's time now to also present him as the ruler of the nations. Behold, the nations are like a drop from a bucket, verse 15, and are regarded as a speck of dust on the scales. In other words, all of the nations that are threatening Israel, all of the nations that are, are stressing and causing their worry and anxiety, Isaiah is saying they are so insignificant compared to God that they are like a, a speck of dust on, on scales. They, they do not even weigh in. But isn't there so much bad stuff that happens? Yep, God rules it all for His good purposes. The end. He, he is morally pure and perfect, and anything that God does or anything that God sovereignly permits, it is good. And this perpetual accusation, this is always the big Well, then why is there evil in the world? Because God determined that there would be evil in the world. He is not the source of it. He's not the cause of it, but he determined it. Otherwise, it wouldn't exist, and you can count on it. But he has a reason for it. Because he is the ruler, and we better watch how we question the king of the universe. I had a lamp at home that had a lion, and it represented the British Empire. And the paw of 
the lamp is upon a globe, and it shows the dominance of the British Empire in the 19th century over the entire earth. But in reality, the line of the tribe of Judah has his paw upon the globe, and he dominates the world scene by the carrying out of his purposes here upon the earth. No empire has anything on God. Who is the one who determines what empires rise and what empires fall at his good pleasure? Because this earth is merely his footstool. That is the God that we worship, and that is the God I believe increasingly we should be proclaiming with increasing boldness in our churches, in our homes, and to the world, and let the earth tremble. This is Wretched Radio. Wretched. We're hip. We're technologically savvy. Would you please join us in liking, subscribing, or sharing this video?